In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the OpenSense firewall in a high availability cluster, allowing us to have redundant firewalls on our network with automatic failover should the master firewall go offline. Let's jump straight in. Hey guys, I'm Lyle and welcome back to my channel. We're going to be continuing with our virtual lab building series. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we can configure OpenSense in a high availability cluster. And we're going to be building this network that you guys can see over here. So the way that this works is we will need to have a master OpenSense firewall, which will be our main firewall. And we will have a secondary firewall called a backup firewall. Both of our firewalls will be connected to this virtual layer 2 switch. This would be our LAN, where our virtual clients will be connected to the Windows 10 machine. And then we've set this up in a way that we've simulated a WAN connection. So VirtualBox will provide DHCP for us and provide the WAN interfaces with with two IP addresses respectively. And then these dotted lines in between each of the firewalls on the LAN and the WAN side, those are to represent the virtual WAN IP and the virtual LAN IP, which we'll go into a little bit more detail on how to set up shortly. So the whole purpose of having this kind of setup is redundancy. So if one of the firewalls go offline, there will always be a redundant one to pick up the load. And from the user's perspective, they won't even be aware that one of the firewalls have gone offline. So the way this all works and fits together is we have a protocol called Common Address Redundancy Protocol or COP for short. And basically the way this works is it communicates with multicast packets on a network and it signals the neighbors, the other firewalls, essentially of each one's status. So think of it as kind of like a heartbeat on the network where each neighbor is periodically advertising between each other whether they're alive or not. So COP uses these virtual IP addresses which are shared between the two firewalls, the master and the backup. And they all belong to a group. So the virtual LAN IP for 10.200.200.254 is what the clients on the network on the LAN will use as their default gateway to be able to connect to the firewall and go out into the internet. And then the same applies with this virtual IP for the WAN 10.0.2.254 would be shared as a single virtual WAN interface between the two firewalls. These virtual IPs are part of groups. So in this case, the virtual IP for the WAN will be on group number two. And for the virtual LAN IP, it'll be on group number one. I'll show you how to set this up when we jump into the actual configurations. When you're setting up these virtual IPs, we'll also set up what they call a SKU. And basically a lower SKU number, in this case zero, will always take preference over a higher SKU number. So for our master firewall, we always wanna give it the lowest SKU number, which would be zero. And then the backup will have 100 as its SKU number. Then the other part of how this works is we have this protocol called PF Sync, which you can see is this link between the two firewalls. When you set this up in any environment, a virtual environment or a physical environment, there will be a direct link between these two firewalls and it will have its own network. In this case, my PF Sync network is 10.0.0.0 slash 24. So my master has the IP address 10.0.0.1 and my backup has the IP 10.0.0.2. So the way PF Sync works is it allows the two firewalls to exchange and replicate states between 
the master and the backup. And it's always a, a good best practice to have a dedicated link between the two firewalls for performance advantages and also for security advantages. Generally, that PFSync network will be an isolated network between the two firewalls that we can secure. And so we can prevent any sort of state injection or any manipulation of the states that might happen. So it's a, a slightly more restrictive network when we set something up like this in a production environment. And then finally, all this communication happens where it uses a protocol called XML RPC. And that allows us to sync our configuration between the master and the backup firewall. So if you've been following my lab up until now, you'll most likely already have a OpenSense virtual machine configured within VirtualBox. The easiest way that I found to do this lab is to simply take your already pre-configured firewall and simply right-clicking on it and cloning it and then you can give it a new name so in this case it wants to call it OpenSense Firewall Master Clone yeah you could just call yours OpenSense Firewall Backup so we're going to be cloning our already configured firewall we're going to have a an exact copy of it which is going to be our backup which we'll configure and you can put it into whatever path you want just a tip to avoid any sort of conflicts with our networking. Uh, we always want to just generate a new MAC address for all of our interfaces. And you can click Next. And we'll just perform a full clone. And it'll take a very short period of time just to clone that machine. So I've already got the clone. I've got my OpenSense Firewall Master. And I've got my OpenSense Firewall Backup. Then the next step that you want to do is you need to go to tools at the top and you need to go to preferences and to network and over here we're going to create a NAT network or virtual box so you'll click the little plus button and then it will bring up a network that looks like this or dialogue that looks like this I called mine internet sim and I've given it the IP address 10.0.2.0/24 and I've also selected the support DHCP so that it can provide a IP address to the WAN interfaces on my firewalls. Once you're done with that, you'll click OK. Now, the benefit of setting up a NAT network in comparison to just a normal NAT mode that you'll see in virtual in VirtualBox is that a NAT network allows you to communicate with all the devices plugged into that network as if it was a layer 2 network and then on that network it has its own DHCP server and it has its own gateway which will then give you access to the internet as well. If you left this as just a normal NAT mode which is default in VirtualBox, the devices wouldn't be able to communicate between each other. Even though they appear to be on the same IP address range, they still wouldn't be able to communicate between each other. So you have to make sure that for this lab, you, you set up a NAT network and you create it like we've just done in the previous step. So once you've created your NAT network, then we need to go and apply those settings onto each virtual machine. So we'll start with a master, you'll go to settings and you'll come down to network. Then what you'll do is adapter one, in my case, is connected to my WAN network. I will then select NAT network like you see over here. And I will then use the one that we just created called internet sim. And then we also just want to make sure that promiscuous mode is allowed in this case and we'll click OK and then our other adapters which we configured in the previous parts of this lab would be our adapter 2 which is our internal network and that is our LAN in this case and that is called intnet which I've showed you how to set up in previous videos 
And then we need to set up a third adapter for that PFSync link between the two firewalls. So this will be another internal network that we'll set up. We'll give it the name PFSync. And if you come to advance, you don't need to have promiscuous mode enabled for this interface. For your LAN interface, you need to have promiscuous mode enabled as well for this to work correctly. So once all your networking has been configured, you'll click OK, and then we're done with that step. So because we have an exact clone of our master firewall, I would advise you guys to start up the backup firewall first, which we're going to do quickly. And we'll just let it go through the startup process. So once the firewall is started up, the main reason to do the backup first is then so we don't have any IP address conflicts. So we need to go and change the LAN IP address to 10.200.200.252. I've already done it in the case of, of my backup, but you will need to do that first because if you had to start the two firewalls together, being a clone, they'll both have the same IP address. So you need to do the backup firewall first. Uh, as per our network diagram, it would be 10.200.200.252. So in order to do this, you'll need to have your Windows 10 machine or whatever virtual machine you have connected to the LAN set up and running on the same subnet. And then you'll log into OpenSense using your browser with the default password and username that you set up in the previous steps of this lab. And then to change the LAN IP address, you will go to interfaces and LAN. And if you scroll down, you'll want to set it as a, make sure that it's a static IPv4 address. And you'll give it the IP address 10.200.200.252 or whatever range you're using on your LAN, and you'll click Save. Now your backup will have a totally unique IP address to your master. So once you've changed the IP address, you can then start up your master firewall, which I've done already, and we're going to log into it. So now we have both the master running on 10.200.200.251 and we have the backup running on 10.200.200.252 and they're both operational and connected to the internet. So the next part of the setup is we're going to go and configure the PF sync network that's linked between the two firewalls. So you'll go to your interfaces and assignments and you'll see in this menu, it, it initially won't look exactly the same as what mine does, but there'll be another name here. It will most likely be EM2 or something like that. You then would make sure that your EM2 interface, which is the third NIC that we set up or the third network interface that we set up, is assigned to that and we'll save it. And then we'll go into that interface again, and we'll give it a, a proper name. We'll call it PFSync in my case. And it'll be a static IPv4 that we'll configure. And you'll give it, because this is the master, 10.0.0.1, and you'll save it. You'll follow the same steps on your backup firewall. So once again, it's to your interfaces. You'll go and configure the assignment and you'll call this interface also pfsync and this one's IP address is 10.0.0.2 and you'll click save. Now because these are two new interfaces they won't be able to communicate with each other because the firewall needs to be set up first to allow communication between, between those two interfaces. OpenSense by default explicitly blocks all traffic until it's been allowed on your network. So to do that, we're going to head over to Firewall. And we're going to go to Rules. 
And then for that particular interface that we call pfsync, you're going to go through to it. And we're going to add a rule by clicking the little plus sign there. I've already got my rule since I've done the pre-configuration for this. However, we can go and check mine out. If you go to edit, you'll see that the interface that has been applied on is pfsync. The direction is in. It's communicating using IPv4, and we're allowing, in this case, any protocol. You can restrict this to COP or to various other protocols, which you want to allow on your on this particular network segment. This is up to you, but for this lab, I've just configured mine for any protocol. I've left the source as any, and the destination as any as well and you'll simply click save once that rule has been created. We'll then head back to our master firewall and we'll follow the same steps there. We'll go to rule, pfsync, and you'll see the same rule has been created on that side of the network and you should be able to ping across that link and then you know that it's active and it's working correctly. So the next step is we need to configure the virtual IPs that we discussed earlier. So in order to do this, you need to go to interfaces and you're going to scroll down to virtual IPs and you're going to go to settings. And we're going to have to create a virtual IP on both the master and the backup. And we're going to have to put those virtual IPs into their respective groups for the WAN and the LAN. So I've already pre-configured this machine, but I have a virtual IP of 10.200.200.254 and I've put it in, into group VHID1. So if we come across and we're going to edit, you can see that the mode needs to be set up to COP for this to work correctly. You need to pick the interface that you need to apply it on. So this is going to be our LAN. And then you're going to give it that shared IP address, that shared gateway that we spoke about earlier, which is 10.200.200.254. And that's on a, a class C network, a slash 24 network. And then we have to give it a virtual IP password. This is just to protect the group. And you'll have to replicate or use the same password you configure here on the master. You'd have to transfer that across to the backup as well then so this group can be formed then the vhid group is group number one then this piece here where it mentions the advertising frequency basically this, this is where you'd set your SKU. so for your master you always want to have a SKU of zero the lower number here always takes priority so our master will always be zero you can leave the base as one in this case and then give it a description. I call this one VIP LAN and you'll click save. Then the second interface we'll create is for our virtual WAN IP. So if you click over here, you'll see that it's once again also in a COP mode. The interface now is the WAN instead of the LAN. And we'll then give it that LAN IP address we set up 10.0.2.254, and that's a slash 24 network. And once again, we will give it a virtual IP password. And because this is the WAN group, we will then set it to group number two. And we'll also leave the SKU as zero because this is once again our master. And we'll give it a description of VIP WAN and we'll click save. You'll follow those exact same steps on your backup firewall. So just to show you in my case, if we go to the backup firewall and we go to interfaces and virtual IPs, you'll see that I have the same setup replicated on this firewall and they belong to the same group. So the LAN is VHID1 and the the WAN is VHID2, and you'll just notice the SKU in this case is set to 100. So that just gives this machine a backup priority. 
go into the actual settings you can see over here the SKU is set to 100 and you'll click save and the same applies on the WAN interface. So back to our master we need to configure the high availability setup once again on both the master and the backup so to do this we're going to go to system and we're going to come across to high availability and we're going to go into settings to make this work on the master we need to select the synchronize states checkbox and we need to tell it which interface it's going to synchronize across so in this case it's that pf sync link that we set up and then the synchronize ip is going to be the ip address of the backup firewall which in this case is 10.0.0.2 and then this section here where we do the the xml rpc sync this setup only needs to be done on the master so in this case we're going to tell it that the synchronization needs to be configured on 10.0.0.2 we then provide a username and a password this is the same username and password that you log in when you set this up in a production environment it would probably be best for improved security to not be using root and the root password it would be best to set up just an account for this high availability setup and then all of these options below determines what we are going to be syncing across to the slave so we can sync information such as the dashboard users and groups auth server certificates etc you can fine-tune this to your requirements but for the sake of this lab i've just left it all as default you can see the most important things here would be like the firewall rules um, the nat tables and so forth and you'll simply click save then heading across to the backup firewall we'll do the same steps there so we go to system and high availability and settings and on the backup this is a much simpler configuration all we'll need to do is just tell it to synchronize states and which interface we want to use which is the pfsync interface and the ip is now the ip of the master on the other side of the network so 10.0.0.1 and for the backup we don't have to configure any of this xml rpc sync because it's going to be receiving all of this information from the master so there's no need to configure this and when you're done you'll just click save and you're good to go so the final step is we need to set up a specific outbound NAT rule we need to tell both firewalls that it needs to be using the virtual IP address that we set up which was 10.0.2.254 as our when virtual ip and it needs to have nat translation from our lan onto that particular ip address so in order to do that we're going to go back to the master which we're on at the moment and we're going to go to firewall and in firewall we'll go to nat and we'll go to outbound nat then to configure this by default, it will be automatic outbound NAT. We want to change this to a hybrid outbound NAT rule. And we're going to add a specific rule on the WAN interface that says anything that comes from the LAN address or the LAN network, which in our case is that 10.200.200 network, we want to then translate it to this NAT address which is 10.0.2.254 if we go into the rule you can see how this is done so the interface is the WAN we will then be using TCP IP version 4 protocol will be any we want to we want to we want to NAT all traffic that comes from our LAN address 
and we want to allow any source port any destination address and any destination port and then the translation target needs to be this vip wan address that we set up earlier that's our virtual ip address and once you've done that you'll simply click save if we go across to our backup firewall and we go to net and outbound we have exactly that same rule set up on this firewall as well so now our high availability setup is completely set up and we now are ready to test this so what i like to do in my case is i've added a little widget at the bottom of mine this is my master firewall that we are on at the moment and you can see that if we look at the status over here we can see that this firewall is in fact the master for 10.200.200.254 as well as the master for the WAN side of the network to add this little widget all you'll do is you'll come up to the top and you can just say add widget and then you can go and select the one here for COP mine has already been applied and then if we come across to the backup firewall we have a look over here you'll see that this is now currently set up as the backup for the network as intended okay so to show you how this works i've set up three pings on the extreme left we are pinging 10.200.200.254 which is our virtual gateway ip address which is shared between the two firewalls the master and the backup and then on the right i'm pinging 10.200.200.251 which is our master firewall and i'm pinging 10.200.200.252 which is our backup firewall and you can see all the communication is working correctly so what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a failure on our master so to simulate the failure what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up my virtual box and i'm going to go to settings and to network and then i'm going to click on advance and you have this little option here where it says cable connected for both the adapters what i'm going to do is i'm going to unplug the wan cable and i'm going to unplug the lan cable we're going to click OK. If we go back to the firewalls, you'll see that 10.200.200.251, which is our master firewall, has gone offline. And you see on 10.200.200.254, which is our virtual IP, that we missed or it timed out once. However, it picked up automatically by the backup firewall which is still currently running. And then just to show you, if we go back to our dashboard and we refresh this, obviously that firewall is offline. That's our master firewall, which is currently offline. And if we go to our backup firewall, we do a refresh, come over here, you'll see that now the backup firewall has assumed the master role on this network. So let's put the master firewall back online again. So we're going to go back to settings. We're going to go to network and advance. And we're going to connect the cable for adapter one, and for adapter two. Click OK. And we're going to come open up our pings again. And you'll see that the master has now come back online. We missed a single ping there when it did its changeover. And now the master has assumed that role again. And the slave has always remained online. If we go back to our dashboards and we refresh, you'll see over here that the backup has gone back into its backup state again. If we come onto the master again, 
you'll see the masters back online. We can access the dashboard and we now have a master running again. As you can see, this process is pretty quick and um, the users on the LAN would not even know that this firewall went, or went down. All the states remain intact. All the communication between those clients and the internet will remain intact. They, they won't even be aware that this, this has happened or that there's been a failure. So to wrap this video up, I've showed you a very powerful feature of OpenSense, how we can easily set up redundancy on our network, which is important today, especially if you have high availability requirements on your network. And we've done this relatively easy using the COP protocol, as well as PFSync and XML RPC. And I've showed you how we can simulate a firewall outage and how the backup assumes the master's role with no noticeable disruption on the client side of the network. If you've enjoyed this video, please do consider giving me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It would be really greatly appreciated. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, drop them in the comment box below and I will try my best to answer them as soon as I can. If this is the first time that you have come across my virtual lab building series, I have a few other videos that I've created that currently revolve around this OpenSense firewall. Please do go check those out if you haven't already. And as always, stay tuned. I am going to be releasing more videos in the up and coming weeks as we build on our virtual lab for the fictional company Morgan Maxwell Real Estate. We're going to be looking at some interesting things coming up in the future such as Windows Server and Elasticsearch and various other things. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Cheers for now.